On today's episode, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make beautiful black and white images using a panel called the Infinite Black and White Panel. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I love black and white photography. I think it is a very creative uh, art form because we normally see color, right? But when you turn an image into a monochrome black and white image, it brings out a more artistic quality to it, in my opinion. Now there's many different ways in Photoshop of making black and white conversions, but today I want to show you a panel called the infinite black and white panel. I want to introduce this panel to you. I am not affiliated with the infinite black and white panel so when you, if you purchase their panel i don't make a dime but i really like this panel and i like the results i get so i want to share it with you my community and see what you think of it and let me know in the comment section below if you think this is something that may or may not be of good use to you I'll also leave a link in the description below in case you want to check out the uh, web page and you can purchase the panel there if you want to. Now, again, I don't make any commissions from this panel. I just really enjoy it, but you can purchase it here and uh, it ends up costing you like right now $84 if you use their coupon code BW. Is it worth it? It's kind of on the expensive side, but I bought it and I think it's good, but you'll have to decide that for yourself. But watch the video and let me know what you think. Let's go ahead and take a look at this infinite black and white panel. Now, I really like it and it's really easy to use. So what I'm going to do is see this button right here called create. I'm going to click this and watch what happens. Instantly, I have a black and white image, but notice something here. We have four adjustment layers inside of a group called infinite black and white. Now we have a channel mixer adjustment. We have a selective color adjustment, a black and white adjustment and a curves adjustment. And these are all very important. And it's extremely important too where this black and white adjustment sits because these two adjustments, channel mixer and selective color are working on the color portions of the image because the image doesn't get changed to black and white until that black and white adjustment layer does that conversion and it sits above selective color and channel mixer there's also another little side note about this panel you can also use it for color grading your images you don't have to use it strictly for black and white you can also use it for color grading your images so stay tuned for that i will show you how that works as well and it's it's really cool this panel is simple to use but there's a lot to it i'll show you everything here but it's just that easy to create a black and white image by clicking create. Now watch this. Every time I click create, you'll see a new conversion. You see that? And it alters. And you can just keep clicking through here till you find something that you really like. And when you find something you like, you may say, I really like this. And you could be done right at this point. If that's all the deeper you want to get into it, that's all you have to do. But you can do a lot more. Let me show you something with the history panel. If you come up to the history panel and open up your history panel, you could go through, see every one of these that say infinite black and white. Here was the first conversion I've done. Here was the second one. So you can go through these because you might say, you know what? I liked one of those ones before this one I just made. So you can go through your history and go back and forth and find the one that you like. And then you could even say like you get one that you really like. You can make a snapshot of that. And now that's up in your snapshot, right? So you can come back and get that again if you want to. So you can come here now and click on the infinite black and white panel and keep clicking away. And, you know, you might say, oh, I like that one. You can come to history and let's create a snapshot if you want for that one. And now you'll notice we have two snapshots, this snapshot and this snapshot. So there's many different ways of using this panel. You can use your history, which is really nice. So you can, you might say, well, how, what if, what if I get one and it was a while ago? Well, just go up into your history and you can find it again, which is really nice. Next, let's take a look in this area right here. See where it says light, medium, and intense. Right now I'm on medium, but if I click this on to intense, now my conversions are going to take on a more intense look so let me click create now and i'll just click through these so i'm getting a little bit more intense black and white looks and you may see some faded looks some very high contrast looks it's going to alter and i showed you medium first but let's go to light if you go to light you're going to get some very uh you know, less intensive looking black and white images, depending on the mood that you're looking for. And I like to go through all these and just see what kind of results I get. And it's, it's fun with this because you can just click and get some fantastic black and white results. And I really enjoy that. But let me go back to medium because I think I had some good medium ones in here. But remember, I got my history panel so I can come up and I think 
Snapshot 2, Snapshot 1. I think I like Snapshot 2, so I'm going to go back to Snapshot 2. And now let me open up the infinite black and white panel again. Underneath the light, medium, and intense, we have something called regions. I'm going to show you that here in a little bit, but, but stay tuned for that. But next, I'm going to come down into this area. See where it says shuffle on and off? You don't have to use all these layers if you don't want to. In other words, if you want to use... Um, you don't want to use the curves layer. You can click this and shut it off. Okay. And then when you hit create, it's going to run this without curves. Okay. Or if you say, you know what? I don't want the selective color. We can shut the selective color off. And now when I run it, it's only going to apply black and white and channel mixer. So can you see the endless possibilities here? So you can mix and match, do whatever you want, use them all, or just use some. Or what if I only want the black and white? Uh, adjustment layer so I can just use it and go through that which is really nice or I may say I want them all so that's one thing you can do and let me click create again and okay right there say I like that now I can start playing around here see this area where it says shuffle I could come here and I could shuffle the selective color and it's only going to affect the selective color adjustment okay so let me go ahead and open up the selective color properties here and let's put this on reds now it's going to affect all the different things here like for instance um I, not things but colors right reds yellows greens whites neutrals blacks it's going to affect them all but i'm just going to leave it on reds and watch when i click the selective color here i'll shuffle that and it's going to see how they're changing and altering that's just reds but if i went to another one of these colors like greens when i click the uh shuffle it's going, going to be affecting the green tones. You see that? So you could come here and just play with this, or you may want to just alter, shuffle the black and white, so you can shuffle the black and white like so, okay? And you can also go ahead and adjust these manually if you want. So right now we're on black and white. Now that means I could come to reds, and if I want to darken the red colors down, Anything that was red will get darker. See like the roofs there, isn't that cool? Or I could use my targeted adjustment tool and select different parts of the image. And if you don't have it, come to the hamburger menu and click on auto select target adjustment tool. Now, if I want to darken the blue parts of the sky, I can just drag my cursor to the left and to darken it to the right to lighten it. So I can select any color tone that will be represented behind that uh, targeted adjustment tool. Now the same holds true for any of these adjustments. If I wanted to go here and click on selective color, now I could come here and alter the selective color of any of the colors I want, like reds, which would be in the roof here. If I wanted to take cyan out of the reds, we could see what would happen there. Selective color is quite an interesting adjustment. In other words, in all these different colors, reds, greens, blues, yellows, cyans, there's cyan, magenta, and yellow components to them. And there's also red, green, and blue. The opposite of cyan is red the opposite of magenta is green and the opposite of yellow is blue so you can really tweak these tones and really make your black and white just the way you like it now this is when you really want to go in deep into black and white adjustments but again you don't have to do this you can simply just hit the create buttons or shuffle things around or shut things on and off it's really endless what you can do. The, the possibilities are infinite as the name of the panel states. Before I leave Selective Color, let's click on Blues because we know that we have a lot of blue up here in the sky. So let's see what happens if we add cyan to the blue so we can darken that a little bit or we can lighten it if we go the opposite way. So let's darken it. What happens if I add more magenta? Not much, or I can take magenta away. Not much is happening there. Let's try yellow. Now, yellow is important. Remember, the opposite of yellow is blue. So if I go to the right, I'm adding more yellow to the sky. If I go to the left, I'm adding more blue to the sky. So we can play with that and see what happens when we make those adjustments. And then we also have this one called black. And if we take this to the right, we can make the sky darker. Or if we take it to the left, we can make it lighter. And you can also work with your whites, neutrals, and blacks as well. And if you click on, say, neutrals, you know, you have cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, and blue as well in those. And so you can play with these as well to your heart's content and really, you know, really alter the image. So I highly recommend you play with that, but you don't have to. Believe me, you can simply just come here to this panel and, you know, hit the create button, you know, and do the different adjustments. And... 
Right now, if I want to change it back, I can come to my history panel or I can hit Command or Control Z and go back one step. Well, I hope you're seeing the infinite possibilities you can have with this panel. I look at this panel as a starting point for me. But again, if you don't want to get real intense, but still get beautiful black and white conversions, all you have to do is click this create button, decide if you want light, medium, or intense. And then you could go ahead and shuffle some things through here if you want, or you could try it without the channel mixer. You can shut that off or leave it on, but you can just create like that very simply and easily, or you could come in and tweak all the adjustments up on all these layer adjustments and really craft the image and make it just the way you want. Again, the possibilities are infinite. And now we're gonna take a look at these last few options down here. And then I'll show you how we can use this panel to color grade images. So we have grain that simply adds grain and we all know that grain and black and white go hand in hand. So we can add grain. We can also get that faded look, which is so popular today, where if I click this, you'll watch what happens here. The image takes on that faded look and it's a curves adjustment and it just pulls up on the uh, shadow tones a little bit just to give it that nice little faded look. So we can fade that if you like that look. Uh, I'm just going to hit Command Z just to get rid of that for now. And then we have Contrast. Now, when I click on Contrast, the Infinite Panel gives us a black and white adjustment layer. All right. Just a simple black and white adjustment layer that's in the soft light blend mode. So let me shut it off so you can see. Here's the before and here's the after. It's just adding a little bit of extra contrast. So there's that one. So let me go ahead and get rid of that for now. And the last thing is grain. So let me click on grain. And when I click on grain, it's it converts uh, this layer into a smart object. It's a 50% gray layer. And there's an add noise adjustment. So if I click this, we can come here and add noise. Okay, we can give it more, more grain or less grain. But it's, it's applying the grain in a very unique way because it's just not throwing noise up on your image haphazardly. What it's doing is it's using a blend diff adjustment here. So it's adding the proper amounts of grains to the highlights, midtones, and shadows, which gives you a real realistic grain look. But if you don't like the grain, we can just go ahead and delete that layer. Well, that's pretty much the infinite black and white panel, an easy way to create black and white images, but you can see you can get very deep with it if you want to. It's really up to you. Now I want to show you how to color grade with it. Let me come to this black and white adjustment layer and shut it off. And now you see I have a color image. Now let me shut off the infinite black and white group and here's the before and here's the after. So there's a color grade on this image right now. So let's come here to the infinite black and white panel and shut off the black and white. And now let's go ahead and hit the create button. So we're going to be using curves, selective color and channel mixer. So every time I click create, I'm getting a different color grade. Now I can work with light, medium or intense. Let's put it on intense and see what we get. So let me click through some of these and you can see we're color grading the image. Now intense may be too strong. But let me go back one, Command or Control Z, and I kind of like that one there. Now, if that's way too strong, but you kind of like it, you could come up to the group and just pull back on that particular group. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? So let's leave it up to 100%, but don't forget, now you can shuffle things, like I can shuffle the color mixer, and look at the different effects I get. But there's endless possibilities here, and I love this for color grading, it's really nice. Or I could shuffle selective color which is really nice as well. And let's try curves. Now let's try something a little different. Let's try a light color grading. So let's click on light and hit create a few times. And you'll notice now it's not as intense and it's probably on a, like a landscape scene like this. Probably light is probably a good one to use or possibly medium. Let's try medium and click through a couple here. Yeah, it's a little bit stronger. So I do like the light. So let me go through light here and Stop on one that I kind of like. But as you can see, you can just go through these and and I like that one right there. Let's leave it there. There's one last thing I didn't show you. And to do that, let me go ahead and turn black and white back on. But as you can see, it's really great for color grading. But let's turn black and white back on and let's hit create. And let's just take the first one we get. I didn't show you regions, so let's click on regions and I'll, we'll see what happens. I'll click regions and you'll notice we now have a group called regions and we have three curves adjustment layers inside of that group. And you'll notice that each one of these adjustment layers have no adjustment 
adjusted at this time. That's just a curve, a linear curve right there. So if I click off regions, shut this group off, you don't see any change to the image. So it's going to let you target your highlights, midtones, and shadows. And it's doing that through blend diff. Okay. So we're working with blend diff to target this to the different regions. So we're going to click on shadows first. So if we want to darken our shadows, we can pull down on this curve and darken up our shadows a bit. We can come to midtones and we can either lighten our midtones or darken them. I think I darken the midtones a little bit here. And then we could come to highlights and see if we need to alter our highlights in any way. And maybe eh, something like that. And just play around and get it to where you like it. This is before and after the highlights. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. So and then if I come to the regions group, we can see the before and the after. So regions is a really great way of finishing up your black and white image. And I usually like to wait till the end to use that one and then just tweak up the shadows, midtones and highlights. And you can also use that when you're doing color grading as well. Well, there it is. That's the infinite black and white panel. Great for making black and white conversions. You can go basic with it and get really great results with just a one click. Or you could go ahead and go crazy and make tons of adjustments and craft your image just the way you want. The, the possibilities are infinite. And you can also color grade with it, which I think is a terrific added bonus. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.